Hello guys, good morning. This is Diary of a Coach and today is episode 339. 339, wow. Before we know it, it will be 340, then 345, then 350, then 355, then 360, then 365. Whoa. It's been a beautiful series. Thank you so much for keeping faith and for following Diary of a Coach. Today is a beautiful Thursday morning. And we thank God for his overall ultimate infinite mercies. This is diary of a coach and this is episode 339 this is still our week of unification the week of unity the week of putting your things in one place organizing your life organizing your thoughts organizing your family organizing your income organizing everything that concerns you Today we're focusing on our health, organizing your health, and I'm zeroing in on the coronavirus, COVID-19. So today's today's episode is titled, Arrogance Will Not Cure Coronavirus. Arrogance. I have read and seen all sorts of information about how we see the coronavirus. First and foremost, I want to say thank God that the African continent is a bit, um, do I call it resistant or a bit on the advantage with respect to the coronavirus. While this does not in any way say thank God that the Europeans and the Americans are suffering, no, but considering the kind of infrastructure and dynamics that governs the African continent, we want to appreciate God that this, this pandemic, you know, has not ravaged our land. And we are looking up to some divine help that it does not ravage Africa because I do not know if we are ready for the massive impact in terms of health. But let us establish some rules. This corona issue is a call on us to be very careful with our accessibility and exposures. You have to be very careful. You have to minimize your walking around or your interactions with people in public spaces. You have to minimize your your recklessness, if possible, eliminate it altogether. This is the time to step up your hygiene. As you know, there is this video I saw on Instagram and it was reinforced by CNN. He says, even opening of doors, don't use your bare hands to open doors in public. Don't use your bare hands to touch rails, staircases, walls, platforms, like you are at E3, you touch the counter, you are in the bank, you touch the counter. Be as careful as possible. This is when you should buy as much hand sanitizers to carry around for your good this is when to use soap and water as often as possible it's better to err on the side of caution this morning i watched a video that i have shared in the bsg group that video was shot by some fellow i don't know who that guy is but his analysis was scary do you know he said that in 1720 there was a pandemic that eliminated over a hundred thousand people. In 1820, there was another pandemic that eliminated over a hundred thousand people. In 1920, he said there was a flu, the Spanish flu, that eliminated over a hundred million people. In 1920, now we're in 2020. So it seems every hundred years, there is a massive 
you know, pandemic that takes away a lot of people. Now, the historians are very good with excavating this information. It is our responsibility to put ourselves in a better place so that we are not victims of these cycles. So, I want you to understand. Don't start saying, you know, uh, I'm drinking anointing oil. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I am a child of God. God has protected me and covered me. I have no issue with these confessions. They are very positive confessions. But they are only backed by your own responsibility. Don't be an irresponsible born again. Don't be an irresponsible religious fellow. As you are being religious and spiritual, be responsible. Very, very important. Be very responsible. Don't say, because a typical example, I hear that churches are resisting um, the decision to suspend physical services in places. Well, I know that we have not reached that level where it has become a local crisis that will allow us, you know, that will say, okay, okay, don't gather in places. I understand. But I think that churches should start planning in case this becomes a very severe local problem. We must be ready to suspend our congregational activities, congregational activities. We must be ready for that. If the Pope, who, you know, who is seen as the pion, the leader of spirituality, at least by the context of Christianity, first ever in the history of the Catholic Church, the Pope delivered his sermon via video. And even though he said he felt caged, he had to take responsibility for that. So don't go acting holier than the Pope. Don't go acting Superman, Super Mario. Keep your hands away from surfaces. Please. Please. And if you don't have anything to do outside your house, stay in your house. Stay in your house. It's very, very important. Because I like what Jumake just said, the health place. Being responsible for yourself in this instance makes you also responsible for others because this is contagious. Yes. As you are protecting yourself, you are actually protecting other people. Don't act silly. Don't go roaming about touching different things and doing different... No. Be careful about your health. Take in a lot of liquids. Take in a lot of liquids. Wash your hands as often as possible. Use the hand sanitizer as much as you can. Keep away from crowds that you know you don't have to mingle with. If you are if you're a fan of soccer, last night I was watching the Champions League match between Atletico Madrid and Liverpool. And when they were when they went into extra time, you know, usually the footballers would exchange handshake before they go and start playing. But guess what? Everybody was using ankle, um, sorry, I say ankle, elbow and arm. They were hitting their arm in exchange as greeting. Please, we need to remember that responsibility comes first. You don't have to shake anybody's hands. In fact, even I keep forgetting. And I decided on the 1st of February, when the first case was announced in Nigeria, I said I will not be shaking anybody. But yesterday, I still shook hands. I need to remind myself, Sam Obafemi, you better call yourself to order. No shaking of hands. Suspend it. Use arm. Give each other knuckle. Just do like this, do like this. Nobody go die if we no shake person. Handshake is not breath. And handshake is not the breath of life. Don't shake hands. Please. So let's, let's, let's take, you know, as of two weeks ago, because of the frenzy and the panic, everywhere was all upside down, everybody was afraid. Now we are more calm and now maybe the message can now sink in. Be extra careful about your health. Be extra careful about your health. Sanitize your living spaces. Allow for ventilation. Minimize contact with surfaces. 
Be very, very careful and be responsible for yourself and other people. Please. And schools, I encourage you, encourage the children to use hand sanitizers as often as possible. I, 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 I had to challenge my daughter's school because I, my daughters went to school with their hand sanitizers and one of the, my second daughter's teacher collected it and said, no, you, we don't use this here. I said, who does not use what where? And I'm happy the school took action. Like, you don't do that. Not even now. So, parents, help your children understand the implication of what's going on. Schools, please help us. When we're not there physically, help us maintain that there is hygienic standard in the schools. I beg. No physical contact. Don't encourage anybody to hug anybody or to shake anybody. Leave them alone. In church, don't go say, tell your neighbor, hold your neighbor, shake your neighbor and say you're a bilonia. Just wave, you're a bilonia. Waving is okay. Don't shake. So we need to step up our game, please. Our arrogance as Africans will not help us. Let's not start acting dramatic and acting so confused. I beg of you. So... By the grace of God, I'm hoping, and as we are working and being responsible, we are praying that God would intervene and show us the wisdom of how to tackle this coronavirus. I pray that those who are determined to find a fix would find the wisdom and insight to provide for us the vaccines and the drugs that will help us to tarnish this virus as soon as possible. I also pray that the rate of death would be less because the, the figures are, are just unbelievable. They're unbelievable. So please, and then this is my call to the federal government because I think the federal government has not really been doing some things. A typical example, can we please limit the flights that are coming from troubled nations Please, please, can we limit the flights that come from troubled nations? People are still coming in from, from Italy. People are still coming in from, um, uh, well, China. Yes, people are still coming in from China. Italy has shut down their country. Nobody is going out. Nobody is coming in. China has done it. Why can't we not just say, you know what, if you are from so-so-so countries, don't come. Angola here. Is it Angola or Uganda? said Nigerians should not come. No flight from Nigeria goes to Uganda. Or no, no person coming from Nigeria is, is allowed to go to Uganda. They say they don't want trouble. Have you noticed that most of the cases in Africa so far are from Europeans? Can we not say, you know what, if you're coming from any part of Europe, stay where you are. I don't know why we are not going to take that kind of action. Is it until we become a crisis reading nation because of Corona? No. No. Even, yes, thank you, Then Donald Trump announced limits in flights from Europe, from mainland Europe. That's what I read in the news. Yes. So we need to act responsibly, please. We can't just say, eh, just don't worry, don't worry, it, has, it will not come to Nigeria. Our arrogance will not help us. Though. Countries that have, that are risk, high risk from Corona, should not, nobody should come from those countries. They should stay. Just the same way we denied our citizens in Wuhan, the city where Corona started from. The way we denied them, you know, the privilege of coming back home is the way we should deny any other person who, is, who has come from any location where the virus is very high. Don't come to Nigeria. We need to give ourselves sense. That's, that's very important. Flights should be, should be grossly monitored. I expect by now that the infrared thermometer that checks temperature is, at, is as available as water everywhere so that everybody checks their temperature like by the second. No taking chances, please. So as we're acting individually, responsibly, let us demand that the government also does her part because all of us, last last, we must be all right. So let us not forget our senses and be pushing Sanusi Mata and the federal government loan Mata. All, the, all those loans they are even taking. Anyway, 
Let's get our health together. Let us harmonize our health. Let us organize our health. Let us be responsible. Please be responsible. The moment you feel that you have a flu, whether it's the normal flu or is a, you suspect whatever it is, I beg you, isolate yourself, make contact with the medical people and get the essential treatment that you need. The good thing about Corona is that it is said to be a non-fatal virus. It means that it does not kill. The rate of killing is very, very low. The rate of death from coronavirus is very, very low. So which means that people can heal from it. But let us not even contract it first. Don't wait to contract it before you start taking medication to heal from it. No. So as you are praying and as you are hoping, also be responsible. That is the essence of today's diary. Thank you for watching Diary of a Coach today. It's been episode 339 and I really appreciate you so much. Tomorrow is the beginning ah, of our mental health first aid class, level one. We talk about addictions and basic disorders in mental health and CBT. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. It's a weekend course. Tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. So tomorrow we start off in the morning. Looking forward to it. So thank you so much for your prayers. If you're still interested in joining the course, of course you can register today because class starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow. So do what you should and join the most vibrant, most active, most professional brand. Yesterday, somebody came to me and said, I've done this course. I've done that course. I've done that course. In Sopka, what's the difference? I said, the difference in Sopka is that everybody who does our course will use it. We have created a structure and a system where if you really mean to use what you've learned, you will use it because there are vehicles, there are channels. We have the faculty who trains. We have the mental health community who intervene in social issues and vices of substance and depressions and suicide attempts. We have the cons counseling community that is responsible for counseling and especially premarital counseling. We have the distress call chapter or arm that takes care of distress issues, calling the victims and patients that reach out to us. We have the coaches community that are usually nominated to go coach people or, or speak in, on TV, on air and train. We are always making sure there is room for you to use what you learn from Sopka. That is why we are different. We are outstanding and we listen to you. So if you have not joined any Sopka course or training, you are on a long thing. So this is from me to you. Don't forget to register. Today is the last day because tomorrow class starts. Thank you so much for watching Diary of a Coach. I love